بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we have two integrals a single integral that we evaluate and a double integral to be expressed as a function of two parameters n which is a positive integer and s a complex number with a real part that is strictly positive let's start with the single integral we have integral x from 0 to 1 log 1 minus x the square of log 1 plus x this product of logarithms is divided by x if alpha is log 1 minus x beta is log 1 plus x what we have in the numerator is alpha beta squared the trick here is that we will try to represent alpha beta squared in another way that facilitates the evaluation of the integral note that alpha beta squared appears in the expansion of alpha plus beta cubed or alpha minus beta cubed alpha plus beta cubed is alpha cubed plus 3 alpha squared beta plus 3 alpha beta squared plus beta cubed alpha minus beta cubed is alpha cubed minus 3 alpha squared beta plus 3 alpha beta squared minus beta cubed if we add these terms go away we obtain that the sum of the two cubes is 2 alpha cubed plus 6 alpha beta squared so alpha beta squared if multiplied by 6 is equal to alpha plus beta cubed plus alpha minus beta cubed minus 2 alpha cubed if we add alpha and beta we get log 1 minus x times 1 plus x that's log 1 minus x squared alpha minus beta is log 1 minus x over 1 plus x if our integral of interest is omega 6 omega is the integral x from 0 to 1 the cube of log 1 minus x squared divided by x plus the integral x from 0 to 1 the cube of log 1 minus x over 1 plus x divided by x minus 2 integral x from 0 to 1 the cube of log 1 minus x divided by x let's handle these two integrals together i wrote this integral using the dummy variable of integration y if we do the change of variables y squared is equal to x then y is equal to x to the power 1 over 2 when x is 0 y is 0 when x is 1 y is 1 log 1 minus y squared is log 1 minus x this y in the denominator is x to the 1 half and dy is 1 half x to the minus 1 half dx this integral here is 1 half integral x from 0 to 1 the cube of log 1 minus x divided by x this is exactly like the second integral except that we have minus 2 here the two integrals can be combined as minus 3 over 2 integral x from 0 to 1 log 1 minus x cubed divided by x if we change x to 1 minus x the integrand becomes log x cubed divided by 1 minus x x is between 0 and 1 we can use the expansion that 1 over 1 minus x is summation g from 0 to infinity x to the g let's integrate this series term by term 6 omega is equal to minus 3 over 2 summation g from 0 to infinity integral x from 0 to 1 x to the g times log x cubed we can evaluate this general form in which x is raised to a a real number greater than minus one and log x is raised to the power p a positive real number let's use the substitution x equal to e to the minus w over a plus one when x tends to zero from above w tends to plus infinity when x is one w is zero dx is minus one over a plus one the exponential dw we can use the minus sign to have the integration limits from zero to infinity this is dx without the minus sign x to the a is e to the minus a w over a plus one log x to the b is minus w over a plus one to the power p we can combine the two exponentials as e to the minus w we can take minus one over a plus one to the power b outside the integral this integral here is gamma of b plus one we are interested in the special case in which b is equal to three and a is equal to g we have minus one to the power three that's minus one gamma of four which is three factorial which is six in the denominator we have g plus one to the power four we got minus six times minus three over two this is nine summation g from zero to infinity one over g plus one to the power four that's zeta of four which is pi to the power four over 90. to obtain omega we still need to handle this integral here let's do the change of variables y equal to one minus x over one plus x which implies that x is 1 minus y over 1 plus y dx is dy times minus 2 over the square of 1 plus y when x is 0 y is 1 when x is 1 y is 0 we can use the minus sign here to have our integral from 0 to 1 this is dx without the minus sign the argument of the logarithm becomes y this x is replaced by 1 minus y over 1 plus y what we have downstairs is equal to 1 minus y times 1 plus y which is 1 minus y squared we can expand 1 over 1 minus y squared as summation g from 0 to infinity 
y squared to the power g. If we integrate term by term, we get the integral y from 0 to 1, y to the 2g times log y cubed. The only difference between this integral and the previous one is that g is replaced by 2g. Minus 6 times 2, that's minus 12. Now we have the summation g from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2g plus 1 to the power 4. This is the sum of the reciprocals of the fourth powers of the positive odd integers. Zeta of 4 is the sum with all positive integers. To obtain this sum, we need to subtract 1 over 2 to the 4 plus 1 over 4 to the 4 plus 1 over 6 to the 4 and so forth. We can take 1 over 16 as a common factor and we end up with zeta of 4. This summation here is equal to 15 over 16 zeta of 4. Multiplying by minus 12, we get minus 45 over 4 zeta of 4. 6 omega is 9 zeta of 4 minus 45 over 4 zeta of 4. We divide by 6 to obtain omega. Since zeta of 4 is by to the power 4 over 90, our integral is minus by to the power 4 over 240. Now let's do the double integral. We have integral x from 0 to 1, y from 0 to 1, xy to the s minus 1. The real part of s is strictly positive, minus y to the n, which is a positive integer. In the denominator, we have log xy times 1 minus xy. Let's start by changing the variable x to the variable t. x is equal to t over y. t is equal to xy. When x is 0, t is 0. When x is equal to 1, t is equal to y. Every xy is replaced by t. Our variables of integration are y and t. y is from 0 to 1. For a given y, t is from 0 to y. This is the domain of integration. Let's interchange the order. t is from 0 to 1. If we fix t, y is from t to 1. Integral of 1 over y is log y. When we use the limits of integration, we get minus log t. The integral of y to the n minus 1 is 1 over n y to the n. When we use the limits of integration, we get 1 minus t to the n, all divided by n. We can use this minus sign here to write this term as t to the n minus 1 over n. We have log t and 1 minus t from this part. The other term is minus t to the s minus 1 log t over 1 minus t log t. The trick now is to add 1 to this part. So we have added 1 over log t. We need minus 1 over log t. We split the integral into two integrals. These two terms are here. The remaining terms go to the other integral. I wrote 1 as 1 over n summation g from 0 to n minus 1 of 1. t to the power n minus 1 over 1 minus t is minus summation g from 0 to n minus 1 t to the power g. We also have 1 over n. Combine the two sums as summation g from 0 to n minus 1, 1 minus t to the power g. We do term by term integration. In the first integral, we use the substitution u equal to minus log t. As t tends to 0 from above, u tends to plus infinity. If t is 1, u is 0. t is e to the minus u. dt is minus e to the minus u du. We can use the minus sign to have our integral from 0 to infinity. 1 over log t becomes minus 1 over u. 1 minus t is 1 minus e to the minus u. Lastly, t to the s minus 1 becomes e to the minus u times s minus 1. This integral here is exactly the digamma function. We are done once we obtain this integral. If i of alpha is integral t from 0 to 1, t to the alpha minus 1 over log t, then this integral here is minus i of g. To obtain capital I of alpha, do the change of variables v equal to t to the alpha. The integrand becomes v minus 1 over log v times v to the 1 over alpha minus 1. Let's use an integral representation for this part here. v minus 1 over log v. v minus 1 over log v is the integral from 0 to 1, v to the u, du. This is integral u from 0 to 1, e to the u, log v, du. Integrating, we get log v. When we use the limits of integration, we get e to the power 1 times log v minus e to the power 0. This is v and this is 1. We don't have any issue here interchanging the order of integration because the integrand is real valued and non-negative. If we do the integration first with respect to v, we get 1 over u plus 1 over alpha. If we integrate with respect to u, we get log u plus 1 over alpha. When u is 1, we have log 1 plus 1 over alpha. When u is equal to 0, we have log 1 over alpha. 
this is log one over alpha over one over alpha that's one plus one over one over alpha that's alpha i of alpha is log one plus alpha i of g is log one plus g the sum of logarithms is the logarithm of the product this product here is one times two all the way to n this is n factorial our double integral is the digamma function epsilon of s minus the natural logarithm of the factorial of n divided by n